want to get Chris Dyerwalt uh, up here, Fox News Digital Politics Editor and host of PowerPlay on foxnews.com. And your thoughts so far on what we have seen in terms of the tone and the tenor. A couple of the, a couple of the Democrats, interestingly, wound up making some of the Republicans' best points for them as they tried to cross-examine these, these career State Department witnesses who, you know, got up there and said, look, we're not political people. The story is what the story is. And, and gave a little pushback as we watched this event unfold. Well, sometimes in a hearing like this, Megan, you expect that the uh, results will not match expectations. In this case, uh, these witnesses, uh, uh, particularly uh, Mr. Hicks, have acquitted themselves in such a way that their that the prior rumors about what they were going to testify uh, about have only been amplified in terms of their significance and their impact. They have been calm. Their demeanor has been emotional at times, but they have been able to keep a clear narrative together, and they've been able to describe this in a way that can't that hasn't been unwound by the Democratic talking points on this. You know, there's a, there's a clear set of talking points out there as Democrats today are pushing back on this story, on this storyline, because it's potentially very damaging to the current Democratic president, and it's also potentially very damaging to the woman who they would like to be the next Democratic president, Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, and these guys, in the face of a brutal partisan situation between Republicans and Democrats, these guys are acquitting themselves well. We saw Eleanor Holmes Norton, okay, a Democrat from D.C., trying to get um, Mark Thompson to admit that the counterterrorism group uh, wasn't completely cut out of the meetings, that they did have a role and that they were dis in discussions after that attack on 9-11. And she wanted him to admit that because I think it's his boss submitted a written letter saying, I was, I was involved in discussion. I wasn't in, you know, Benghazi or Libya on the night this happened, but I was involved in discussions thereafter. And we saw Mark Thompson push back on her and, and say, um, look, my part of the counterterrorism bureau, he said, the part that responds to crises, was kept out, not the whole bureau. I never said that it was the entire counterterrorism bureau within state. I said my part, which responds to crises. And that was the part, he said, that would have been the most effective. And it's interesting because, you know, you see sort of these Democrats who are trying to rehabilitate the State Department and so on, and yet wind up sparring with these guys who are experts about what actually did happen in the wake of Benghazi and maybe walk away, you know, a little a little stunned at the line of questioning and how it worked out. Well, the Democrats, you can sum up the Democratic position as it relates to this stuff and what Hillary Clinton had to say. At this point, what does it matter? She was talking about uh, was there a cover-up, what about the false talking points, all the things that uh, uh, Brother Rosen was talking about there, uh, those things. Well, to a certain extent, she's right. She was right. And the Democrats are focusing on that and trying to make the discussion about the bogus talking points because what does it matter? But you know what definitely matters? Could lives have been saved? Could justice have been brought more swiftly to the attackers, those Islamist militants who raided the compound? Could something have been done at all? And on that hangs the question of the long-term consequence of this scandal. If people who could have saved lives or at least killed the attackers, even if it was after it was too late to save the Americans, the doomed Americans who were there, uh, that becomes a real scandal. And then there was a dramatic moment where Trey Gowdy, a Republican, asked uh, it was Eric, I mean, it was Gregory Hicks. That's the guy who was the former deputy of the mission in Libya. He became, he was number two, he became number one as soon as Chris Stevens was murdered. Uh, asked him, okay, so who could you, who's better to ask? Um, what was your reaction when you saw Susan Rice, our UN ambassador, go on five Sun talk shows and tell the world this was a spontaneous protest in response to a video and it wasn't pre-planned and downplaying the terror angle and here is that exchange so fast forward mr hicks to the sunday talk shows and ambassador susan rice she blamed this attack on the video in fact she did it five different times what was your reaction to that i was stunned my jaw dropped and I was embarrassed. I mean, you tell me whether, what does the administration do with that? They come out and say, Hicks, is a, he's a jerk, he's a liar, don't believe the guy who just cried over the ambassador's death. I mean, are we supposed to just say, that Hicks, he's a, he's a partisan hack? What are we supposed to do with that? 
the talking points from the Democrats today relate to this. We feel bad for him because he's very emotional and he was there on the ground and he lost his colleague. And it, we feel bad for him because he obviously is very emotional. And they use the word emotional a lot to indicate maybe he's not thinking so clearly. Then there's the next spin, which is the, which is sort of the, the sub rosa spin here, which is, yes, there was spin after the fact. Yes, there was, uh, Eliding, yes, there was half truths, yes, there were these false talking points, but yeah, and that part was political, and that's not cool. But remember that we did everything that we possibly could. The president and the secretary of state did everything that they possibly could in the time that was available. Yeah, there was some phony baloney from Susan Rice afterwards, but whatever Mr. Hicks is talking about, he's just very emotional. Uh, but what Hicks is saying and what makes the testimony so damaging is the fact that there were options. He believed that there were options available to save lives or at least provide a definitive show of American strength instead of, instead of saying to these Islamist militants that we would throw our hands up and allow Americans in a U.S. facility to be murdered without response. Mm -hmm. well, the one lawmaker tried to play that soundbite from the director of national intelligence saying, I felt bad for Susan Rice. You know, she, she was just saying what we, what we told her. Well, it's true. She was reading talking points on those Sunday talk shows from the intelligence community. Talking points that had been heavily edited at her department, the State Department's request. And we have the emails in which Victoria Newland, the spokesman for the State Department, was saying that it's, they're not good. They're, I'm unhappy. Get, get rid of these references to Al-Qaeda and so on. And they kept cleaning them and cleaning them and cleaning them mm -hmm. to the point where the substance of the remarks had been completely gutted. The message had been changed from one of these are Al-Qaeda terrorists who are attacking us in a terrorist attack to, oh, these are spontaneous demonstrations. I mean, it ignored the issue. It's not, it's not whether it's Susan Rice's fault. It's whether it's the State Department's fault for cleansing talking points that came from the intelligence community. Uh, quick last thought, Chris. Once Steve Hayes, our friend, got a hold of that email and knew that, the jig was up, and that's why you get the tacit admission that the talking points were political phony baloney. Right. And so for the for DNI Clapper to say, oh, I felt bad for Susan Rice. It wasn't her fault. It was the intel community's fault. No, it wasn't. I mean, the intel community did it. But it, they did it after the state kept objecting to their talking points over and over and over. And then finally, uh, again, according to the House report, quote, White House officials responded by stating the State Department's concerns would have to be taken into account, which means do it. Cleanse the talking points and off Susan Rice went. Chris, thank you. You bet.